Dry desert stars fade, the setting dawns. Rough, unforested mountains surrounding a sage-strewn valley cut by a single road. A small, glittering saline lake at one end, and in the center an oasis. A dot of green that testifies to an old man's dream and efforts, and those of hundreds of young men later. In 1917, El Arnon retired from a successful business career and looking for a place to institute his educational vision, saw it in this landscape, what people still see when they cross one of the two passes into this still isolated, still austerely beautiful, still valley. Nunn wrote, The desert has a deep personality. It has a voice. Great leaders in all ages have sought the desert and heard its voice. You can hear it if you listen, but you cannot hear it while in the midst of uproar and strife for material things. Gentlemen, for what came ye into the wilderness? Not for conventional scholastic training, not for ranch life, not to become proficient in commercial or professional pursuits for personal gain. You came to prepare for a life of service, with the understanding that superior ability and generous purpose would be expected of you, and this expectation must be justified. Even in scholastic work, average results obtained in ordinary schools will not be satisfactory. The desert speaks. Those who listen will hear the purpose, philosophy, and ethics of deep springs. Listen to the voice of the desert, and you will receive from it enthusiasm and inspiration. The voice of the desert still speaks at Deep Springs College but in concert with the voices of the farm that begin with the dawn. These are the students of Deep Springs, engaged in an essential aspect of their education, handling most of the duties of the farm ranch. Here students are not cared for, but take care of themselves, learn to care for calves and for ideas, for their own development and that of their school. This breeds responsibility not to mention a variety of skills you would have thought themselves capable of before arriving. Lessons of nature's give and take are not easy, but it's a good way of learning firsthand what has to be given to justify the take, which students elsewhere only know is something handily provided in plastic. Students at Deep Springs have milked the calves every morning and every evening for some 60 years now. It was in 1917 that frontier entrepreneur L.L. L. Nunn, having abandoned transferring his educational vision to the East, opened his college here. The current head of Deep Springs, Brant Kehoe, explained some of the background of Nunn's ideas. Uh, I think that the idea of Deep Springs goes back to an experience that the founder, L.L. L. Nunn, had in setting up and operating power companies in the Rocky Mountain states around the turn of the century. He and his brother were the first ever to develop alternating current as a commercial power source. And this was done at a time when Colorado, where he started, and the other places he had plants were still frontier country. And he recruited young people from those areas who clearly did not have a background in electrical engineering. So he set up training programs along with the work operations. Because of his own interest, he included history and literature, elements of a liberal education which he felt every young man should experience. And he found in that setting where all the people were focused on one activity and the success of that activity determined the success of that community in an important sense, that the young men developed a sense of community responsibility, of social concern, of an awareness of the role that they had in the community. He then opened a house at Cornell, Telluride House, uh, funded and endowed an association, Telluride Association, to operate it, and sent these young men back east to finish up their degree in electrical engineering and further their liberal education. Uh, when he left the power company, he sought a place where he could duplicate the environment which created the sense of community responsibility and the isolated cattle ranch in Deep Springs Valley was his solution to that quest. And I think Deep Springs works pretty effectively in that way. The, the ranch is not as much a focus as the power plant probably was in those early days, but the community is isolated. The work activity of the students, the uh, other responsibilities that the students carry in the community, 
create the situation uh, which he was looking for. And students do develop a sense of awareness of their role in the community, an awareness that if they do well, the community benefits. If they slack off or even simply behave carelessly, that there is uh, a real detriment to the lives of all around them. None, like other capitalists of his era, such as Leland Stanford or John D. Rockefeller at Chicago, wanted to cap his career with the college. Since his fortune was smaller, the campus was smaller. But his long personal involvement with education gave him ideas as well as money to contribute. College was to be a getting away for the student, a time of finding himself away from what none saw as the crippling forms of a mass society. It was to be a place where students weren't given an education or where their parents bought one, but where young people experienced, shaped, and earned an education. And it was to be training that was rigorous intellectually, but even more demanding in terms of serious responsibility to self and community in a situation small enough so that no one could forget how much their efforts mattered and how much they depended upon the work and integrity of others. from the Deep Springs home movie archives, seemingly dating back to 1917, suggests how little the spirit of the place has changed, despite some variation in transportation and attire. The sense of joking camaraderie is clear as the few recreate the mass society they've left behind by exiting and rushing around to exit again, sometimes under a new hat. And there have always been the more formal entertainments, melodrama in this case, providing some outlet for the melodramatic intensity sure to come from some 40 people living with high effort and expectation in such an isolated community. But this pales before the steady drama of the labor program, the haying, the irrigation, the romance of cowboying connected with the school's desert ranging herd of 200 cattle, Classrooms, if less photogenic, have always been and remain the heart of the Deep Springs experience. Five or six permanent faculty and one or two visiting professors each term give Deep Springs a remarkable faculty-student ratio and keep classes responsive to students' growth, intense and small, such as this one taught by Peter Rolnick. There's a lot of freedom to teach how you want to teach. There are no strict requirements that such and such has to be covered, though it's true that a student who takes physics here has to be prepared to take the courses that follow physics when they transfer to another school. I have plenty of time to prepare interesting sidelines to whatever we're working on. And since there are so few students, I have time in each class and I have the opportunity to watch each student and pay attention to whether they're learning or not. For faculty, like students, the attraction of the school is its openness, the chance it gives for self-direction and communal involvement. The stress is on basic liberal arts, languages, mathematics, and sciences, the core of courses that allow students to transfer after two years to juniors, commonly into leading schools like Harvard, Brown, Stanford, Berkeley, and MIT. There are also courses related to self-expression, varying with changes in faculty, music, drama, photography, art. Most formal classes end at 12, and the afternoon begins with lunch, one of the meals the cook and students prepare in the boarding house kitchen, a center of warm friendships and warm aromas. Yet classes less end at Deep Springs than carry over in thought, in conversation, and in argument. Even serving lunch involves a kind of democracy, staff, students, and faculty giving a hand to what needs to be done. And it's a very social democracy, with the families of staff and teachers joining in meals with students, lunch often eaten on the lawn, well warmed at midday, even in winter, by the high desert sun. The afternoon's varied work begins among the often surprising music of Deep Springs.
this simultaneous communion with dirty plates and platters and baroque cantatas is part of the rich juxtapositions that give unity to the multiplicity of Deep Springs, as student David Arendt oh, yeah. explains. Oh, well. All right. I think because people take ideas seriously here, we develop kind of a common vocabulary, which allows us to continue, you know, conversations on things that, you know, interest all of us, you know, not only in the classroom and in, in the BH, but just, you know, spontaneous conversations doing labor and around the ranch. Work assignments change at Deep Springs as the seasons, the needs of the place, and the interests of the students change. The students elect a student labor commissioner who assigns specific tasks to assure that what most needs doing gets done. Students seldom have much experience, often none at all in what they work at, but they learn, sometimes the hard way, sometimes the thoughtful way, often with the help of the staff, the cook, the mechanic, the farmer. Ranch manager Jeff Pope explains the system. As I see it, the importance of the ranch at Deep Springs is not just to provide a labor program for the students, but to balance the intellectual and physical life. I think the tendency in the modern world is to be over-specialized and for people to live in a world in which they less and less have an opportunity to perceive the overall interrelationship between themselves and the land and the country. And I hope that Deep Springs overcomes that tendency. The fields of alfalfa are the chief cash crop. A large garden supplies much food in summer and fall. Putting seed in desert soil seems futile effort, but determination and water work miracles. And the farm animals provide closer ties and other foods. The milk cows, the turkeys, the chickens, the pigs, the beef cattle. At Deep Springs, no one can escape the harsher as well as the caring realities of community in a way that breeds what none called abundance of heart. I think that one of the good things about Deep Springs is that people um, are con conscious of what goes on around them and that they can't escape the things that are happening to them and that um, this creates an atmosphere of um, collective reflection on what is happening and this enables us to change things by a very conscious process rather than having changes just afflict us in some, you know, as if by forces beyond our control. I think that um, people do uh, tend to take ideas a little too seriously um, sometimes in that in the student body meetings we tend to talk about the purpose of the ground rules or of the idea of community um, in a way that's too technical and they kind of lose sight on one of the most important ideas here which is abundance of heart. When dinner has been eaten, often ravenously, evening begins. Studying in rooms and library and computer center. The whole community gathers for an activity that none considered the center of his educational system. Public speaking, where four or five students once a week give short speeches on anything that concerns them, intellectual, personal, or communal. David Goldfarb explains. At Deep Springs, the students are all members of the student body, a, a genuine authoritative governmental organization. Um, we all have real power here. We actually can, in meetings of committees and other groups, decide who the faculty will be, when they'll come. We can choose the students. We can decide and play a role in the in decisions about the, the future of the college and the future of the ranch. Not all the decisions, however. While a large majority of both students and faculty have felt that the policy of four males only that none set up was outdated, no longer in line with either practical considerations or the social idealism, the good of mankind in its broadest sense that none stressed, the trustees have disagreed and the policy remains. Still, the experience of Deep Springs the sense of responsibility toward community influences its graduates. It's difficult to look at the alumni group and say in some specific way the purpose of the institution has succeeded. On the other hand, we have uh, a group of alumni who have been quite successful and quite influential, I think, in society, many of whom uh, 
by almost any standard you would judge as having contributed importantly uh, to the larger community of which they are a part. And those who graduate seldom fully leave. Even more than most college life, the Deep Springs experience remains a haunting and a shaping experience. Elman Grimstead, after a year at Brown, has come back as one of the two cowboys who in the summer take the beef cattle to mountain pastures. I spent two years as a student here the last year which I worked with the ranch manager breaking and training the horses and being trained by them and after that year I took the cattle up into the mountains for the summer. In September I brought them back down and spent four months in Paris. Since January I've been at Brown studying philosophy and literature and dance. I come back now to take the cattle back up into the mountains again for the, this summer before returning to Brown again in January. After a year in Paris and on the East Coast, it's certainly nice to be back to the mountains and my horses and cattle. Get to miss them out there sitting in libraries, etc. And uh, there's a, a closeness and an intensity here which I haven't found since leaving here, which a lot of the times is good, a lot of the times is simply difficult and hard to deal with, but I can't help but think coming through it that and it was worth it and learned to ask questions that otherwise you maybe wouldn't ask. And whether or not you find answers, you try to keep going. When the sun sets, physical work nears its close, with the intellectual and communal work long continuing in this school that charges students nothing but their best efforts in many directions, that always asks and gives a lot. The high desert stars will look down on new dreams that are part of an old one, an education where students learn the limitations and the importance on their and all people's efforts to keep a free and caring and thoughtful community alive.